Okay guys, we are here today to look at the newest version of Helm, which is version 1.21. And we wanted to show you all of the new features that have come out with this new version, um, things that have changed within Helm for this new version. Um, so one of the things that they have changed is that you will now see faster speeds in which you can install Helm and faster speeds in which data can be transferred between your assets and the shore side. It still does depend on your connectivity um, as well as the file size a little bit, but you will see the increased speeds um, for those two features. Another big feature to um, be aware of is that Helm is no longer supporting Internet Explorer 11. It will now only be supported through Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome. So those are the only two internet browsers that it will be supported on moving forward. So if you do have Helm um, or if you use Helm on Internet Explorer 11, you will want to make sure you have the new Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome browser downloaded. Um, moving into the environment. I'm going to show you a few features that have changed. It's not too crazy, but we do have some awesome changes that they've made. The first one is with corrective actions. So corrective actions really only come from the audit feature rather than um, creating your own task in the environment. So I created a task just to show you the difference between the two. So I'm going to show you what it looks like first in comparison to the tasks. So if we go over to compliance, and our audits. I've got quite a few tests in here, but we're gonna go down right to this um, audit right here. You're only going to be able to see this new feature in the verification stages. So I'm gonna click on the one that is in the verification stage, and what they've done is they've added this decline button right here. So basically the crew has said that they have finished this test task and it's been completed and now it's come to you on the shore side as the port, man, um, the, sorry, the port engineer, port captain to approve it or now you have the option to decline it. If you hit decline, we can select who is declining it and the reason for um, declining this action. I'm just gonna type no reason just for fun. We're going to hit decline, and now you're going to see that this little red thumbs down icon is there and the date and time that it was declined, okay? And now they have to go back in and fix the problem again and resubmit that um, that declined task. Now the, or I'm sorry, declined corrective action. Now I'm going to go back to the onboard stage up here and show you that when basically I, and also, I'm sorry, it does show you right here for that vessel that this was declined and that they need to go in and complete it again. So they can go in, they can put the information in, they can hit finish. I'm finishing it this time. And that's gonna resubmit it to be approved. Now the difference between this one right here is this is a task. Now I created this task just from um, hitting log a new task, log task. I created this before I made the video. So that's the result of this. And basically you'll see that there is no decline button here because you're not submitting it to a shore side personnel or a higher up to be approved. It's just showing that it's been finished. So the corrective actions coming from the audits are the only, um, are the only tasks that can be that can have a declined button at this moment so your tasks you will not see that button okay so remember tasks no decline and if you have a corrective action coming from an audit you now have the option to decline okay now we do have some new permissions that have been um, added into the system and I'm going to show you what those look like up under setup and users we're gonna to go to roles. So this is if you're setting up new roles, you'll be able to see these permissions. I'm gonna click a new role and I'm gonna click the asset side. There's two new areas where this has where this is living. I'm sorry, I'm gonna go here and settings. So under maintenance and settings, these bottom two boxes are the newest um, 
user permissions that have been made available to you. So the can close shore assign tasks from onboard. That's this one right here. Basically, it's controlling whether or not a user that's working onboard the vessel can finish a task that was assigned to shore. Okay, and um, this is only this is working within the overview tab. It does not work using the advanced search feature. So this is um, allowing them or not allowing them to close shore assigned tasks. The next one can update task assigned to the field. So it's basically saying whether a user um, can change the assign to field on a task after it's been saved. So assigning to shoreside asset or dry dock is basically what it's saying that they can, um, they can change it after it's been saved for the first time. The next two user roles are underneath the compliance side, and this has to deal with the corrective actions that we were just looking at coming from the audits. So the first one is can update corrective action assigned to fields. So it's the same thing we just went over, but with corrective actions. So whether they can change the assigned to field on a corrective action after it's been saved. So changing it to asset, dry dock, or um, shore. And the last one is can update corrective action do field. So this is allowing them to change the do field of a corrective action. So you do have these two new user role uh, permissions that you can um, change or update. It will be automatically updated for all of your users. So if you don't want them to have those permissions, just let us know and we can make sure that we take it off for whatever roles you don't want them to have permissions for. If you have a um, a role that doesn't use compliance that we don't have compliance assigned to you, then you don't have to worry about that. They won't be able to see this information. The last thing for version 1.21 with Helm, and I don't have it available in this tenant yet, but e-signatures for forms are becoming available. They are available right now as a pre-release, and e-signatures will provide your crew with a means of adding their digital signatures to forms. So instead of them having to just select their name, they would actually have to sign it with their mouse or finger on a touchpad. Um, so please reach out to us if you have any questions or would like to see a demo of this feature, we can get in direct contact with our account manager at home and we can get that demo set up for you. And if you have any questions on version 1.21 or are confused on anything that we just went over, please let us know we are available for any questions you may have. Thanks.